In addition to treatment with medications after a heart attack, as part of your overall treatment, you might also have some procedures done. And these range from smaller interventional procedures to big open heart surgeries. Generally, these are reserved for patients with STEMIs, ST elevation myocardial infarcts, the more serious type of, of infarct. But they can be done for patients with NSTEMIs, non-ST elevation uh, myocardial infarcts as well, if, if they're not responding to treatment with medication alone, or if they have a lot of risk factors for bad coronary vessel disease. So once you've been given some medications to deal with your, your myocardial infarct, the first thing that happens from an interventional point of view is you'll get a coronary angiogram done, which is where an interventional cardiologist, a specialized heart doctor, will take a, a sort of unique type of x-ray of your heart's blood vessels. And normally on a, on a normal x-ray, you can't really see people's blood vessels. So in an angiogram, the cardiologist will inject a special type of dye into the patient's uh, circulation. And that dye will help the cardiologist to really see the blood vessels of the heart really clearly. So coronary angiograms are to check how badly and, and also where your coronary arteries are blocked or narrowed. And depending on how bad the clogging is inside the coronary arteries, the, the cardiologist will then make a recommendation for what procedure that you need to go on to next to fix the underlying problem with your heart. So this is what a coronary angiogram looks like. You can see it's really a cool sort of dynamic picture. You can get a real-time look at how healthy the person's coronary arteries are. So yes, these are blood vessels, and, and this is actually the outline of the heart here. In this coronary artery here, there's a pretty severe blockage, a pretty severe narrowing of this coronary artery. And over here on the right, it's, it's, it's resolved, it's opened up, and that's after treatment. So depending on how bad the clogging is inside uh, a given person's coronary arteries, the cardiologist will then go on to make a recommendation for what procedure to move on to next to fix the underlying problem with, with someone's heart. So let's actually have a look at a few of these procedures. Percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI, is where a doctor will insert a catheter. So here I'm drawing a catheter now, this purple thing. So this is actually a wire-like tube that a doctor will, will thread into your femoral artery, or actually sometimes some other arteries, but usually the femoral artery. So you'll thread it into your artery, sort of put it into your artery, and thread it up to your heart and into your coronary vessels which, as it probably sounds like, it takes a lot of skill and knowledge to do this. And depending on what they find in your coronary vessels, depending on how bad the blockage in your vessels is, they'll either just do something called an angioplasty, which is where they blow a balloon up that's on the end of the catheter. So the, there's a balloon on the end of the catheter, and when they blow it up, it sort of opens up the blockage, pushes all of that atherosclerotic plaque aside, and allows blood through again. Or they'll do an angioplasty, so what we just saw here, and insert a stent, which is a tough mesh-like cylinder made out of metal that gets left behind in your, in your coronary vessel to prop it open. So that's PCI, that's percutaneous coronary intervention. Either just angioplasty, so opening up a, a clogged artery with a balloon by using a catheter with a balloon on the end, or by doing angioplasty, so the ballooning technique, plus inserting a stent and leaving it in there long term, so i.e. forever, right, indefinitely. So that's PCI. Now the, the next sort of grade up in terms of interventions is coronary bypass graft. So this one is really a whole different ball game. This is an open heart surgery. So let me clear off some space here. Let me clear off some room here, because now this is the big time. So here I'll draw on some more coronary arteries here. And, and the reason I'm drawing more on is because I just want to show you that coronary artery bypass grafts, or cabbage, as the acronym sort of allows us to pronounce it, cabbage, is, is really only done in patients who have really severe coronary artery disease. And so by severe coronary artery disease, I mean if they have pretty significant plaques built up in at least three of their coronary vessels. And we call this condition triple vessel disease. And so you can just kind of imagine that if somebody has triple vessel disease, it's really not going to be easy for them to get oxygen, say, from, from their coronary artery up here, right? down to this part of the heart down here because there's this huge blockage in the way. And so 
and that's the same the same sort of thing goes for for this plaque and and this plaque right here so in a situation like this you've got huge areas of heart so basically all of this area of heart that this vessel supplies actually it supplies more than that but I won't bother drawing it in and you know all of this area of heart and all of this area of heart that's essentially being um, deprived of oxygen so we have to do something about that that's really really serious so what happens what happens in 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 coronary artery bypass grafting well, just as the name suggests, bypassing, we, we, we take blood vessels from elsewhere in the body and, and use them to bypass the atherosclerotic plaque. So I'll draw some on here to show you exactly what I mean, and, and I'll actually use pink to draw on the new blood vessels. So a blood vessel might be sort of attached on here before the, the plaque and then sort of used to reroute blood around the plaque. So it'd be um, obviously attached again on the other side after the plaque. And by doing this, you can restore blood flow to that affected area that I sort of highlighted before. That, that wasn't getting much oxygen at all. And so the same sort of procedure will happen with the rest of your blocked vessels. And let me just say that I'm not drawing it exactly how it's done in theater, in the operating theater, but this is really the general idea of what happens. So just for interest's sake, blood vessels are usually taken from three main places. So on the inside of your rib cage, so, so what I'm drawing now is, is on the inside, not on the outside. On the inside of your rib cage, there's one that's really popular for use in bypass graft. That's called your internal mammary artery, and there's one on each side. In the forearm, you've got a good one. So in the forearm, you've got a radial artery. And on your inner leg and thigh, you've got another one, um, a vein called the great saphenous vein. And again, just to reiterate, the purpose of coronary artery bypass grafting is to reroute blood around plaques so the blood can get to the heart muscle where it's needed. So this is a really cool surgery. I mean, it, it sounds super complex and difficult, and, and it really is. But I remember the first time I scrubbed into one of these procedures, and the whole time I was really just amazed at the skill and the composure of the surgeons who were doing it. They're really well trained, so the rate of complications is low.